What's up folks, welcome back to the channel. I know some of you folks probably don't even recognize my face because I'm rarely on here, but I'm here right now, okay? And we're gonna talk about chassis selection really quick. This is something I think is really overlooked in the night game with thermal setups. Uh, it's not, it, I think it's a problem all the way across the board in the shooting scene. Uh, it, you gotta give yourself some options with adjustments with your chassis if you wanna be comfortable. Um, but anyways, with thermals, it, you really got to be careful because uh, this is nothing like what you experience with a day optic. Day optics, you can make the adjustments you need on your length of pull. Um, you know, you can move your scope forward, move it back. Uh, you, you can find the right spot. But with thermals, you don't really have that luxury uh, because of the eye relief, the eyepiece. Uh, some eyepieces are really good. Some of them are horrendous. Uh, some of them just not going to work on a bolt action, and it's happened a lot to me. If you see me running a scope on a bolt action, more than likely that's a good fit, but a lot of it starts with the chassis, not just a rifle. Uh, this is the Badger M134 CPR. Uh, you guys already seen a video on this. I got other rifles over here that I might pull in for the video, uh, but uh, I really want to talk to you guys just strictly about the chassis, and I'm not sitting here pushing a product on you. I'm not sitting here telling you how to do it. Uh, I'm just telling you things that you need to pay attention to. The night game is dominated by AR-15s, AR-10s. It doesn't matter, semi-automatic. It's dominated. Uh, but there's a lot of folks out there that are venturing over to the bolt gun scene and they want to run a thermal on their bolt guns. Or there's a lot of folks that are getting into the night hunting game and that's all they have is a bolt action. You can make it work. I've seen it. Uh, I've seen the pictures. I've done it in the past where I was on a rifle that had just a fixed stock. Most factory rifles come like that. They don't give you any type of cheek weld adjustment or length of pull adjustments. It's just a fixed chassis. And those suck, all right? It, it is what it is. And I know some folks don't want to hear that. And there is some great aftermarket chassis that are like that. And those are great for daytime use. Uh, but when it comes to thermals, uh, you better give yourself some options in the rear. So we're gonna go over a few things here. And then uh, hopefully I can help somebody else out there, uh, help somebody out uh, with this because this can get very frustrating and very expensive if you don't pay attention to what you're doing. I've seen a lot of guys out there, they buy these factory guns and they don't even pay attention to what's going on. They throw the uh, thermal on there and they're like, oh, the eye relief sucks on the scope. No, the eye relief doesn't suck on the scope. It's just your chassis isn't set up for it, you know? So. Don't put the blame on the optic, put the blame on your setup, you know? Get it set up properly, and you're gonna be very comfortable with the setup and probably be very efficient in the field. So this right here is the Manners CS. Uh, this was specifically built with the Badger M134. Uh, and the way you can tell is it's inletted for the Badger M134, or for the 2013 action. Uh, but their cheek weld adjustment's a little bit different than the newer version they have now. I think they have a Gen 2 of the CS that you can, you can purchase. Uh, but it's a little different when it comes to the cheek weld. Uh, they run some spacers on a saddle type, uh, saddle type uh, cheek weld uh, riser. And um, I think it works, but you're probably gonna have to purchase some taller spacers uh, to be able to get set up with an optic like this. This is uh, the Hybrid 50. Uh, I don't think this is gonna work really well on a lot of uh, actions that are out there. This 2013 action has a really long base here. I talked about it on the Hybrid 50 video, but uh, this is the perfect setup for the Hybrid 50. Uh, this is a 2.05 over the rail optic, so it's extremely tall, uh, but I have the, the, the cheek weld adjustments that I need and the length of pull for the proper eye relief for this optic. I cannot imagine trying to shoot this optic with a fixed stock. Uh, it might work on the action, but it might not work back here because I have no type of adjustments, okay? Uh, hands down, one of my favorite chassis, unfortunately really hard to get and very expensive. So um, there's some folks out there, I know you don't have the budget, uh, to venture off into something over a thousand dollars. Another good option is the MDT XRS, uh, the KRG Bravo, uh, the Graybo. Graybo makes some great chassis uh, at a, an affordable price. Um, but if you have the money and you, you got the patience to order a Manners, these are great. These are great chassis to hunt with at nighttime because you can fully collapse the stock. And I don't see anybody needing it to be any shorter than where it's at right now, but 
I can collapse this all the way. There's a button right here that I push, but I have some set screws that hold everything in place. So I can't just knock it in by accident. But uh, this one right now is hands down my favorite chassis to hunt with at nighttime. All right, so what we have here is the blue MDT ACC Elite. Um, I know you guys have already seen this rifle or this chassis on my 223. It didn't pan out very well on that setup. On that setup. Uh, and a lot of that had to do with weight. Uh, that's another thing that you want to pay attention to is weight. Uh, some of these chassis can be really front end heavy or ass end heavy, uh, depending on what type of barrel you're running or barrel length and optic and all that. You gotta, gotta pay attention to this stuff, okay? Uh, if you want to find a, a happy balance. Um, but unfortunately with the 223 with the carbon barrel, it was too light on the front end. It was a lot of weight back here in the rear end and I did not like that. So uh, we put the six Creed in here. And uh, if you follow me on IG, you see in all the coyote kills, uh, this and my 22250 and the KRG are probably my favorite varmint setups. The M134, the Badger is a really good pig setup, but I also slay coyotes with it. That's the same rifle that I pulled off the double headshot at like 170 something yards. Uh, that is the rifle that I use. But when it comes to varmints, I prefer the lighter and faster stuff. And that's why I prefer the Six Creed and the 22250. Um, the 223 is not ditched. I didn't abandon it. It's in a Manners LRH right now that I'm playing with. I just got to get an optic on there and kind of figure out what which optic I want to settle with. But uh, this right now is probably my second favorite for, for when it comes to varmint hunting. Uh, the MDT ACC Elite is not a cheap chassis, uh, but I'm telling you guys right now, it is phenomenal. Uh, I, I don't know what happened. I just started paying attention to what they were doing in the PRS scene, and I'm like, man, if they're able to make all these adjustments and add weight and get this like awesome feel to compete with during the daytime, why can't we have that type of setup at nighttime? And so, I ventured off in the MDT's uh, line of uh, chassis. Uh, obviously, I'm playing with some other stuff as well, but uh, just because they're using it during the daytime to compete with doesn't mean that we can't use it at nighttime, all right? And this is a TH-50C from IRAY. Uh, when it comes to thermal optics, folks, it doesn't matter if it's Trigicon, Envision, AGM, Pulsar. We can go down the list of different thermals out there. Eye relief is going to vary from the optic. Okay, eye relief is going to vary from optic to optic. Uh, everybody's using different style eyepieces. Uh, there's different designs. Obviously, this is a longer optic versus the Hybrid 50 or a Mark 1 or the 75 RS75 that I use. Um, it just varies. And uh, I'm telling you guys right now, when it comes to this chassis and this optic, this is a phenomenal feel right here. Perfect length of pull. I can drop that that butt stock right in the pit of my arm right there where my elbow is. I bend, I pu pull over and bam, my, my hand lands right on the grip. Uh, I know a lot of people, they cringe on 90 degree grips. I don't know why, don't knock it on until you try it. Not a fan of 45 degree angled chassis. I love the 90 feel. Uh, anyways, um, check out my cheek weld adjustment here. It's a lot lower versus the 205 with the hybrid 50. It's a lot lower here because we don't need to go that high with the TH-50C and the mount that I'm using. This is an ADM mount. Uh, I think it's at 105, but um, perfect length of pull. Got my cheek weld adjustment here. I'm able to get a good cheek weld and my eye relief is awesome right here. I'm able to see everything going on inside the reticle. Um, like I said, going back to a fixed chassis with no type of adjustments, I've made it work sometimes and all you see is just a reticle. All you see is just a reticle. You want to be able to see your battery life, where the range, what range you're at. Uh, if you have a range finder on your optic, you should be able to see if you're recording or not. Uh, there's a lot of things that you need to pay attention to on your display. And if you don't have the proper eye relief, how do you expect to see that type of stuff? You know, uh, you don't want to get put in a situation when you're, you know, you're extending your neck, trying to, you know, look into your optic. It's, it's extremely uncomfortable. Get the chassis set up properly, and I'm telling, you, I'm telling you guys right now, you're gonna enjoy the experience at nighttime if you have the proper chassis. 
Enough of me talking. I hope I helped one person. If I just helped one person with this video, that means a lot to me because uh, I've been down this road before. You know, I was behind a traditional style wood stock that didn't have any adjustments and tried running a, running a thermal. And I went straight to the AR instead of trying to make it better, you know. Uh, again, you don't have to break the bank. Uh, there's cheaper chassis out there that are under $600. Um, you don't have to go out and buy a whole new rifle. All you got to do is just get yourself a different chassis. Uh, if your rifle already comes with that chassis, make those adjustments. Make those adjustments and get yourself set up on that optic properly. And I'm telling you guys right now, you're going to slay like no other because the worst feeling in the world is going out there knowing you're not comfortable with your setup. How do you expect to go run a marathon when you don't have the proper shoes on? You gotta have the proper shoes, you know? So it's the same thing. You wanna be able to, you wanna be comfortable with your rifle. Again, enough of me talking, I've been rambling, but I just wanted to help you guys out. Uh, we're gonna try to get some more videos out here really soon. Um, people have been asking and it's time to deliver. It is time to deliver. Got a bunch of kills. Maybe we'll do a little highlight reel with a bunch of coyotes dying. I'm not sure how I'm going to do it, but we'll get to that. Anyways, you guys enjoy the rest of your Sunday. I appreciate all the support. I appreciate the patience, and I will see you guys in the next video.